this is taking this texture that I'm showing you on the left feeds the main texture and this is what I paint and so I also built another filter I just need to disable this that allows me to mess around with this output so you see on this image in the left here it's distorting the output and it's sort of just like especially in borderline kind of areas starts blending more you can see you get more interesting blending between the colors and I can start adjusting up here sort of pushes colors around and you get much more interesting shapes like this um, so you can see things getting like pushed around because like these kind of artworks I've, I've made lots of them before and and they've all been fully generative but I'm trying to make it so it's like formative so I can paint it and in real time and it's also generative to some extent I also feel like this is moving a little too quickly so I have this um, the phase of this ramp animated so it just keeps rotating around and that is just moving slightly too fast for me so 0 0.05 Four, no, five. Whoop. Okay. So now that's moving a lot more slowly. If you ever see me like messing up, um, it's because I accidentally hold the mouse and the pen in the same hand and try to use the the Wacom pad as a like mouse pad and it never goes well for me okay so this is what I made last time <laughs> yeah yeah I'm glad somebody else has this problem I've because I've got the pad set up so that like the pen can't click like I can't click with the Wacom pad I can't click on anything I use it purely for input inputting drawing and stuff but yeah if I hold them both at the same time the mouse gets confused as to where it's supposed to be all right so this is looking pretty good um first of all I might just do a bit of tidying up here because everything is looking really messy I'm going to put in a null here so we can sort of separate out sections of what's going on um, so I've got like my color palette generation section then I've got my distortion section here and then and then these brushes so this brush um, is already encapsulated I don't need to mess with that but this other brush is sort of all over the place so I'm gonna put it in its own container too so here's where the tablet is coming in here's the tablet scalar which I used to adjust the XY position so it fits this is the tablet it's getting referenced everywhere so I don't want to encapsulate that but basically everything else I want to encapsulate so this all of this all of these and this and all of that I'm gonna go and right click collapse selected Did I broke something mm. 
need these two. What do you mean by recursive displacement? Like... Feeding back on itself? Or... Because the way I, I tend to do displacement is have it based on the color. So the color, like one color will move something somewhere else or another color will move something another way. Um, and so it's always based on what color is being input. And sometimes it's like you can set it so like you can run. Oh, I think I did it somewhere here. Yeah, it's in this brush. So like... In here, I have the color running into a noise, so it's selecting um, it's selecting different color values based on the original color value. So you don't have to say, have the same color values every time. So, like, I could animate this, and it'll produce different colors for each of my main colors. You do that by just like putting the uh, the color scheme into the second input of the noise. And then, then you can animate it and have different directions for different kinds of uh, colors. I hope that's what you mean by recursive displacement. Or if you just mean displacement in a feedback loop. Yeah, I use that like all the time. All right, now I was trying to encapsulate all this. So all of that. And... Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Love displacement inside feedback loops. Okay. I think that's everything. And I go collapse selected. Perfect. All right. So I'm just going to call this. I'm going to call this cloud brush. And so I also need a way of selecting which brush I'm using. So I'm going to put a, I have my hotkeys on my tablet set up to do just numbers as they come into touch designer. So I have full screen on that to that resets. Like, I, I always use two to pulse any feedback, so it resets feedback loops. Um, so I'm just going to... Hotkey 4 is going to be changing brushes. Because I have been... changing by just, like, disabling this guy, which I don't really want to do. So I'm going to customize this component... This just allows you to add custom parameters to any kind of encapsulated objects. And I'm going to go on. And that's going to be a toggle. So now I have a custom parameter up here where I can just turn my brush on and off. And then in here, I'm going to throw down a parameter. If I just go up a level, jump in here, you can see when I toggle this toggle, I get this on and off in here. So I'm just going to use that, put another level in here, set this to back to one. and use this parameter to control the opacity. Uh, so when I draw, if it's on, it's going to draw. And if it's off, it's going to do nothing. And then, 
I need to do the same thing for this other brush, which is the border mix brush. So close that. Once again, customize the component. Get a toggle called on. And now this is going to be a little bit more confusing how I do this. Um, well, anyway, we need a par to start off with. Okay, so... Actually, it's not confusing at all. We're just going to do it the same way. Uh, another level. Because the way that this brush works is, you can see, when I, when I touch it, it's... You can, it's quite faint, I don't know if you can see that, but when I touch it, it's increasing the level on this circle. So, the same thing again here, I just need to adjust the opacity of that circle. And I guess I'm also going to bring a keyboard in. Key 2. And just have it pulse this feedback. Okay. So when this is off, it's doing nothing. And when it's on, I am scrabbling things around and adjusting this in real time. Awesome. So then to link this all up to my tablet controls, I'm just going to throw down another keyboard in. Set it to key four, because this is where I have key four. There. And I'm actually going to do something a little different over here, because eventually I want the ability to record all of my actions and play it back. Um, so it's like I do a painting and then you can watch that painting playback. So, for that to be, like, easy, what I need to do is I need to have one central point where I can put a record in. So, basically, have all the controls coming through one central node, and then I can have a record, and then I can record everything going into that node, and then I can play back everything from that node. And I've set up this tablet in caps here to be the main one. So... I'm just going to throw down a merge. And combine this in here. So then everything, like I can put a record in. Record everything that comes in, save that, and then play it back by just reconnecting this to the tablet. So... Anyway, and to be even better about this, I'm going to put down a rename and change this to brush select. So that I know what it is, and then it's going to go into account. And then this count, so this is when I hit key four, the count increases, you can see. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, yeah. So the count, there's only two brushes. So I'm gonna put the limit maximum to one. You have to reset it. Um so now zero, 
it's going to cycle between 0 and 1 every time I hit the 4 key. 0, 1, 0, 1. And then I reference from here. Oh, this is going to be a little bit more complex. All right, I'm just going to do it a simple way right now. So brush select, chop reference. So I'm switching this on and off with this. Um, and then when I reference my other one, type in a little Python expression here, one minus. So let's just test this all out. Um, I should be able to, I'm going to reset everything by hitting the two key. Then I should be able to pulse it, draw in some uh, extra colors on top of this. And then, okay, so here we are, drawing in extra colors. That's working exactly how I want it to. And then if I hit the four key, I can mess these around. Wait, is that, that looks a bit zoomed in. Ah, there we are. And then messing around. And then I hit the four key again. And I'm back to drawing. Hit the four key. Back to messing around. Okay, that's nice. That's a good start. Um, and then I just realized that I'm not switching colors correctly, I don't think. Um, if I go into this cloud brush. All right, no, it's key three. So... If I select the four key, I need to build a user interface for this eventually because I, it's going <laughs> to, I'm going to have so many controls that it's hard to remember. Um, okay. So if I hit the three key, I should be able to bring in other colors. There we are. Paint in some dark purples around here. I mean, I think this makes a lot more sense if I, I do it step by step, like, let me just reset all of this. Um, like, if I start off with this base, then I start adding colors like this. Maybe up here. Add some red. And then I move over to the displacing brush and start making those kind of changes. I also want to have some kind of like macro displacement brush so I can displace large sections. And then I guess the goals are going to be to like include even more brushes that do all sorts of different functions. So there we are. Makes for pretty good artworks. Um, they're a bit static for me though. Like eventually I want to have a brush. I mean, this is a bit confusing because it's like, how would you do that? But to have a brush that creates a moving object. Um, 
not really sure how that exactly would work. Like you have a brush that you do in a stroke and then it maybe it's like a fluid simulation. So you take the velocity from the brush and then it keeps moving the painting around in the direction of whatever brush you did. That might work. All right. It's just, I'm just going to set this up so I can go to full screen easily. I have a couple of like preset key commands that I always use for everything. And so if I just throw another keyboard in, um, I usually have control one. All right. Control one set to full screen. So you can easily go to full screen like that. It looks quite nice, I think. So yeah, the next thing I want to do is uh, improve the messing around brush a little bit more because it's really static. Like, wait, if I go out of full screen, I'm still on the mess around brush. Like, so I'm messing, messing things around here. Once, once I've fully messed around a section, so you see this, this area right here, um, once I've fully messed around that area, distorted, displaced, whatever, um, I can't redo it. I can only, I can only mess around new sections and I guess I want to be able to constantly keep keep messing <laughs> i've got to <laughs> I find a better way of saying this messing around um I've, i want to be able to like layer distortions on top of each other so let's have a look at how that brush is working and if we can do that let's take an organizational minute here make this a bit smaller make this a bit smaller we don't need this anymore. So, border mix brush. Let's tidy this up a bit. Okay, so the way that this brush is working is that you have the input coming in from the tablet, which controls a brush here. You can see um, in this transform here how I'm moving it around. So there, things are getting moved around. Um, and that, that brush is taken into a feedback loop, which records this image which is shows all the spots that I've basically brushed and um, it's got varying amounts of alpha channel, so transparency. And then that's being used as a mat to paint these uh, displaced noise over the original image. And then that is... so this is being used to displace the um, the image that comes in. And so it's basically going to always be the same. I mean, this texture is moving like slowly, but I want it to be different noise variations on top. So I'm going to have to have another way of doing this. And how am I going to do that? Okay, so let's set up another feedback loop. I'm going to go multiply. So this noise is animated. I'm actually going to animate it a little more. So as you can see, this all this displacement pattern changed, changed when I, I did that, which is good. So I've got one step of it. It animates over time, 
but I want a more constant building up kind of version. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that noise by the input. And so, so now I've got the noise being saved. Wait, when I put this feedback loop together, it'll be be say be be being saved. So another feedback and another over. And complete the feedback loop. And then I'm going to reference this here. Cool. So I've got two feedback loops. The second one, I can paint the noise in. Like that, just like that. And so that's going to stay. And that noise, these these values are not going to change, whereas the other these values are changing. And this allows me to then paint over the top new values. So once you get to that point, I mean, the, the noise isn't, All right, I'm going to have to do a quickly do something else because uh, the rate that this noise is animating to control this displacement here is good, but what I want to do is I want to have it move faster so that you get a bit more variation here. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to get rid of this. We'll hide it over there. Um, I'm going to put in a transform. I'm going to run this through a transform before it goes here. So this way I can control, I can just go abs time. And it vanishes. We've got to set tile to mirror. Okay, so now I have this noise constantly moving. Um, that's moving too quickly, I guess. But let me just show you the effect it has on this feedback loop. It means that... Alright, now it's moving too quickly because you can see it's it's distorting sideways while it's going, but you can see that it's painting totally new values over the previous values. So I just have to adjust this so it's a lot slower. So, all right, I don't really like that it keeps moving. Like it's an interesting effect, but it's not exactly what I want. So new plan. Instead of having a transform, we're going to take a logic. So what I want to build now is basically um, for every time I put it um put the mouse the blah 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 every time i put the brush down i want this to randomly select a new position in the noise to sample from um so i'm first going to detect when i put the the pen down and then make this randomly move every time i release the pen so i already built a system like this before but it should be pretty quick so i need a logic Let's just do a select first. So 
So I select the channel name Pete because as as I press down, you can see it goes from 0 to 32 to indicate the pressure. And then the logic is just if it goes above 0, it's a 1. If it goes to 0, it's a 0. So that just detects if I'm touching the tablet with the pen. So I take that. I need a math. And then a count. So now every time I touch it, the count increases. And that's not exactly what I want. And that's why I put the math in. So I can invert this. So range 1 to 0, 0 to 1. Now, every time I release the pen, the count increases. And actually, I don't need a count. I usually do these counts because I'm usually adjusting the seed of a noise. Um, like this value. Uh, and usually I'll have a count just adjusting that randomly. But as you can see, it adjusts the image very drastically when I do that. And that's not what I want. So... I'm going to put down a hold. And a noise. Time slice the noise. Change it to random. And make two channels. TX and TY. Okay, so the noise just generates random values, and then I run it into the hold. The hold just means that every time I release, I get two new random values. Just like that. Pretty simple. So then, with this transform, I'm just going to throw down a null quickly. I've got to adjust the X position by that, the Y position by that. Okay. So, now every time I release the pen, I get a new random position to sample from. So let's see what that does to my feedback loop. So if I draw over here, okay, and then I sample again, and then sample again, sample again, and we get new patterns basically every time I hit the, every time I retouch the pen. So if I like keep drawing, it's not going to sample very differently. But if I touch it, if I release then touch, it's going to create really new patterns, which is exactly what I want. Because I want to be constantly adjusting this. I should turn notifications off. Huh? Okay. So I basically want to combine this and this. And I might just adjust this so this is not... Things are going to look wacky for a second because this is all getting displaced now. Which is not what I want, but... Let's so I want to put in a composite 
composite this and this and basically any kind of values that combine the the two noise sources is going to be fine so actually no that's fine that's fine never mind so maybe a difference oh, i don't want to use difference because it's going to go all the way black so i can go add and then just divide the whole thing by two or i could go I don't want to use maximum maximum and minimum are really useful blending modes, but I don't want to use them in this case because um, then you'll have constantly shifting. You won't have the constant movement. I want them. All right, so I do want I do want add, and then I just need to add a math. And. And divide the whole thing by two, except not for the not the alpha. Um, there we are. Oh, and this is eight bit. And this that is why this is not working. All right, you got to be really careful in touch designer what kind of uh, bit depth your colors are because this is this all right so this noise is a culprit it's only 8 bit fixed i need to change that to 32 bit float and then i'm going to have to pulse these now it's 32 bit float all right let me just quickly paint in some stuff again because i got rid of it all <laughs> and this is looking extra messed up because of well all right let me just fix that messed up lookingness i'm going to put in a transform and then the background color is 0 0.5 Comp over background color. Okay, that fix all the the messed upness. Um, that issue was caused because there was a whole lot of black space in the displacement. There was like zero in the X channel, the the red channel, and zero in the blue channel, which means it's any pixel with a zero and zero is going to be moved down and to the right, and a gray pixel doesn't displace at all. Um, so I've got to add this gray background here. So let me just get back to testing this out. Um, I don't actually, I want to be, I want to put a bit more color in before, before we go on. Blue, bit, bit more this dark color. Okay, let's just make this a bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. I guess I want you there. And you to be bigger too. Okay. So if we change brush now, I can paint this displacement in again. And that's working quite nicely.
And so this section that I've already painted over, I can now paint over again and again and again and again and again and get new new variants each time. That's good. Let me just go in full screen for a second, see what this looks like. Problem with this is I really cannot see what I'm doing when I'm in full screen. All right, let's exit full screen because. Oh, God damn it. Okay. Now we can see what adjustments I'm making. I think I'd like to have some kind of like user interface going so that this this window that I've got up on the left here is is more able to be like adjusted. Let's just do something really basic, um, which will be very useful, which is. OK, so this. I'm going to put in another null. And collapse selected, and I'm going to call this UI underscore display. So in here, I'm going to basically build my little user interface that I'm going to be using to paint. Um, there's going to be a variety of like useful readouts on here. So the first thing I'm going to do in a select and then I'm going to go dot dot slash take me to the next level tablet so that's I'm just referencing an operator up the top that has all of my control data coming into it and from there I'm going to select TX T not P TX and TY and then run a null. And then I'm going to make a circle. Adjust the border width. Fill out for it's going to be nothing. Border color is going to be all white. Maybe that's too much of a border. And then can I composite that? Over a constant. So this circle is going to be my little indicator of where my brush is. Because I lose track sometimes. We change this to fit best and then scale. Oh, maybe point 0.1. Put in a transform so I can move this around. Change this to fraction aspect and use this null. T 
tx ty composite this over that then out oh, or not out just to here Okay, so now when I use my tablet, I have a little indicator. I know this is confusing with the with the mouse there too, but like um, you can see here, I can now see exactly where my controller is. And what kind of action I'm doing. That's cool. Don't need this anymore. Okay. So now just while we're here, I may as well build a little interface for my brush. Actually, let me just check one thing, one quickly. Cool. Just checking that Twitch is running and it is running fine. I get a lot more love on YouTube than I do on Twitch. Okay. Let's go. So since this is going to act as my like user interface display thing, I might just add another thing, which is see my brush selection here, um, have a readout so I can always see which brush I've got selected. Um, so I'm going to run another select. I'm going to get the brush select, so zero or one. And so I want to use this to basically look up something, which is probably going to be a dat. How difficult am I going to make this on myself? All right, this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to do a table. And I'm going to edit this table. And so our first brush, first brush is the cloud brush. Add a row. Second brush is um, I'm going to call this micro displace brush just because I feel like I'm going to be making like a larger scale displace that I can move things around with. So yeah, so cloud brush and micro displace brush. And then I'm going to go with a select and I'm going to select by index. And then put a null here. And I'm going to use this null to drive the index of this select. And so it's showing that I have the micro displace brush active. Then it's going to do a text. A null dat. It's just good practice to put nulls at the end of everything in case I need to like 
reference or change something in the signal path. And then, so here, the dat is going to be this. Get rid of this. And should turn off notifications, but one second. Let me finish this. Uh, so I'm going to want like 512 by 60. Yeah. And so now when I change brushes, it changes cloud brush, micro displace brush. Um, let's align this to the left. Horizontal align is going to be left. Let's change the font. Um, I often end up using Roboto for all this, but to fit with where's Proxima no yeah. Let's actually make these all caps. Silly um but I like things to look good. Cloud brush micro displace brush. Cloud brush, micro displace brush. Cool. I guess there'll probably be a, a proper interface soon, but just to make this quick and easy, put an over. It's going to be this. Over this. It's absolutely not what we want. Set it to native resolution. Justify vertical. We're going to put it in the bottom and the left. Cloud brush, micro displace brush. It's just translated a tiny bit across. Okay. So, let me reset it all and try it all from the start. I want to start off with the cloud brush. And I'm going to paint in the clouds. I can see it's here. I can change the color. Paint in some... That looks like... Wait. Have I got something wrong here? Yep, I've got them around the wrong way. So... Okay, so it says I have the cloud brush, so I should be micro displace. What is going on? Cloud brush. All right, because I've already displaced it a whole lot. All right, let's reset this again. Oh, something's not right here. I can tell you what's not right. And the cloud brush is not painting clouds where it should be painting clouds. Um... One second.
Okay. So we've got to fix the cloud brush so it is actually going to paint clouds where there are clouds. And it's probably because this transform is set to fraction and not fraction aspect. So if I unadjust these, change this to fraction aspect, reset them, we should now be painting exactly where I want to be painting. Okay. Yeah. So here we go. We're painting in clouds. Paint in more here. Paint in some blues. Painted some blues up here. Okay. So now we take a change brush to the micro displace brush and start messing around. I sort of feel like this micro displace brush is like a little bit aggressive. I might change it so it works a bit more slowly. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. All right, let me just change, make that little change to the micro displace brush and then we can move on. Caught at the border mix brush over there. Okay. Make it like half as, even less, 0 0.08. So this will adjust how intensely things get added. Still pretty, pretty large amount going on. It's because this, this feedback loop is quite intense. And let me just paint in again. Paint, paint, paint. Blah, 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 blah. Alright, that's a good start. Now, if I make this even lower, 0 0.05, it's because this feedback builds up really quickly, um, because that is the nature of feedbacks. But, let's change... I think that's a bit better. It's a bit slower. All 
I don't really like that it's all going the same way. I wonder if I can adjust that somehow. I think it's because everything is like a brightness offset from so I wonder if I set this noise offset to zero It's going to be more of an adjustment and then this displace the source midpoint is then zero. Then we don't need this math. Don't need this transform. How about that? Yeah, now it's unclear which direction it goes. We can probably then bump the intensity up a bit more. Let's see how it looks from resetting it. So now do this place. I think that's good. It's like less additive this way. It's like. Yeah, less additive. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. <clears throat> You can see how it looks with the other color scheme too. So if we go into the switch and go to, oh, that's interesting. It would be cool if we have this set to blend between. We can do a slow transform between the color schemes. Or even keep it like at a blend like that. Oh, that's really cool. A really interesting combination. So I guess these colors sort of work well. I mean, if I can, if I set that system up properly, when I switch to this, I should be painting. Yeah, these kind of colors. What colors have I got? Oh, I've got the orange. There's the orange. Can paint the orange in. And then I've got the dark. And then... Oh, I've got the blue. Maybe some blue over here. 
and then that's definitely not displaced enough so I need to like mess it around very cool very very cool why don't we just enjoy that for a second while I grab a drink I think it was a good combination of color schemes, which is by total accident because I didn't really mean for this to happen. It was just sort of like the two color schemes happened to work nicely together. But that's good. So the eventual idea with this system is to be like having more movement, I guess. I want to be able to compose the movement of the, the thing. The other thing I'm thinking is that I'll need to have the different brushes reset themselves differently because like currently if I hit reset it causes the brush to reset all the brushes at once which I feel like is not ideal. I need to be able to reset individual brushes. Another idea is also like I've been mo was, uh, mostly working with everything coming in then going into this one filter which creates the motion but maybe I need a brush that works with the filter too like takes like the filter causes all these streaks right like you can see all these streaks streaky movements everywhere and I think the filter takes the in incoming colors and picks directions based on them but i can sort of decouple that from the main artwork and so i can then adjust the direction of the streaks which i think could be interesting the question would be how to do that without losing individual details um but i'm sure i can work that out Okay. Just thinking of what kind of next brush I should do. Might be cool to have some kind of brush where um, I take like something where I can paint larger sections of color because this background uh, ramp thing is cool but it is still not like, like what if I wanted to paint a landscape, like with a sky or something. All right, let's try it. Why do I always lose that output when I exit full screen? Weird. Okay, let's start a new brush. I'm going to get rid of some of this because I need more consistent workflow. And I'm going to call... Collapse this. Oh, maybe not. Collapse this. I'm basically not using it. Um, anymore. 
so collapse these guys. Call this ramp distortion. Get rid of that. And then, okay, new brush time. And I guess this brush is probably going to go under here, but just to keep this organized. It's funny switching between Max MSP and um, Touch Designer because in Max MSP, you can use send and receive to move messages around, but it's actually way slower. So you have to, it's better to make connections. But I think in Touch Designer, it's basically the same speed to use a, a wireless connection versus a full on wired connection. But anyway, let's make a base. And I'm going to call this uh, solid paint brush and once again I'm going to put down a select and reference those tablet inputs dot dot slash tablet and I think I'm going to do the same thing as this select all of this so these can be the colors that i oh. <laughs> just changed to black and white all right. what did i set you to m yeah okay so I'm just pasting these in. So once again, I can pull the color values in from the ramp. And eventually, I I think I would want to get rid of the ramp entirely so I can just use... You know what? What I should do is I should have six of these. so that I can just like reference even more. So this needs to be five. And this needs to be six. And connect these into the switch. Awesome. I just had a good another idea for another brush. I'm going to start a to-do list. The new Touch Designer official update came out today, I think. Um, and it has, like, comments and stuff, which I would really love to include in this. I just haven't updated it yet. So I'm just going to put down a text. Call this. To do brush where um, which just moves around
So this is going to be like a purely motion-based um, brush that just like moves elements around, possibly in layers. So like you could only, instead of moving the background and the foreground, you're only moving the background or only moving the, um, the cloud elements or only moving something like that. Um, so, yeah. All right, the solid paintbrush. So once again, it's going to start off like everything else with this and this and this. This, this. So if I just copy all these elements and paste them in, they're going to be broken, but I can fix this all. So if I connect this to null 2, then this to here, and then a constant. Okay. Take the alpha down. Put in an over. And then you should be referencing a math. Range zero to thirty two to zero to one. I'm going to keep this sort of big. What are you mad about? You're not mad about anything. You're mad about something. Okay. So now we've got another brush. I'm not going to worry about this for now because that's just going to be distracting. We've got a new brush to think about. So we need to select these colors. Actually, put in a multiply. And then we do our usual feedback loop. Over. Got to finish out the feedback loop. Okay, so now we've got quite a big brush that we can paint large areas in. And once again, by hitting the three key, we can change that. And so this could be like our background. That's not bad. It's not a bad start. So I want to do some little things to this to add a bit of movement. Um, 
So I'm going to add basically displacements to this feedback loop to make it a bit more interesting. In fact, why don't we set the output of this so it's our background now. I might put in a blur first. Actually, let's leave the blur out. Blurs. Let me see what it looks like blurred, actually. I mean, it's already fairly blurry, but if we... Blurs are not that useful once you get to this sort of high resolution stuff because um, because the blur blurring a 4K image like this in real time is is really heavy on the the CPU the CPU the GPU and it's just not really a good use of resources. There are better ways to achieve things than using blurs. Um, so I tend to try to avoid it until like I really have to like there are some cases where you like really have to use a blur um but that's I just had another idea because I was thinking about different ways that you could use blurs and then I thought what if you constantly like that you can make these really blurry brushes that like spread out really quickly if you put a blur in a feedback loop. Um, but then I thought, what if there is the, what if to loop? So most of my brushes that I've made don't decay. They're like, they're really fixed. Um, like once I've drawn something, it doesn't fade away. But if you put a level in a feedback loop, you can make the brushes slowly start fading out. And so I was thinking, what if there's like a looping brush? Like it keeps looping the same brush strokes over and over again. Um, and and those, they, they fade away. So... What was I going to do? I was going to put this as the background. So instead of this circular rotating ramp, I'm going to now use my new thing as the background. And now we get an interesting new option, which I'm going to adjust because I don't quite like it. So if we add... A lot of this yellow. I just don't want to have any blacks in here. Okay, now let me just change brushes and... Actually, I should be using my... UI display thing, shouldn't I? Okay. So set this to view. I already just noticed some artifacts that I don't like. I don't know if you can see this on screen, but there's all this banding and stuff. I've got to fix that. But cloud brush. Hmm. And this is where it pays to be able to change brushes. Uh, 
Ah, it's really annoying. All right, let's just go back to the brush. If I just... Yeah, wait, what? Why don't I just put this to zero, turn that off, and then I can really paint what I want. Change the colors, yeah. Some blue in here. And then change to the mess around brush. Mess this all around. Let me just switch back to the cloud brush. I need to. All right, that's fine. That works. All right. So, let's jump into the solid paintbrush and make some changes. So, in this feedback loop, I want to be able to... Wait, let me just change to the micro display push. Um, I want to be able to have a little more detail coming through so like a good way to do this is to do a slope maybe increase the strength to four and then displace what's in this feedback loop by the slope so that into there you get these interesting looking things, and I haven't put this into the loop yet. Um, another thing I need to do is to change this to 32-bit float. And this is still going to be 8-bit, so pulse. And so let's just paint in some colors again. I forgot that I disabled this. Set this back to opacity of one. Okay. And we paint in Some that, change color. Okay, get rid of that little black bit there. So, we've got this displace. And I'm going to put it in the feedback loop. Oh, it's doing the negative one way. I want it to have be at zero. So now it's doing no displacement. Now it's in the feedback loop. And so let's just see... This can be a lot smaller. We're focusing on this guy right now. Um, all right, so let's just change the displace weight. Okay. 
All right. So you can see it's sort of like evolving. And I feel like this is going to be slow. Oh, it actually looks quite good. Because <laughs> you can see, all right, so you see it slowly moving, changing. I think we're going to... What we're going to do here is input a resolution. If we reduce the resolution to like a quarter. Yeah, that's a bit more what we want. The problem about this is that light colors end up like totally dominating so if I paint in again, and then wait, look how fast that moves through everything. And then if I put in a brighter color, and then, yeah, see, like, dark colors get swallowed up and brighter colors expand. And I guess you could mm, invert or multiply this by, or what we could do, I know what we can do is we can go a look up. No, not a look up. Put a noise in. Okay, yeah, no, this is what we want. Output is just noise. And then we change the seed. Um, all right. Let's just abandon that for a second. and restore our clouds and restore our smudginess then adjust our Distortion. And look at the final option here. Oh, I forgot you minimized. All right, there you are. Okay. And let's get back to work on this guy. Wow, it is really hot in here. I need to put my aircon on. Okay. Just adjust this. I feel like this doesn't really have enough 
displacement. I'm gonna need to make adjustments to that brush. Okay. What am I doing? All right. 0 point is going to be 0, your 0 is not going to be displaced anymore. Okay, so I'm going to take the slope, and I'm going to put a threshold on it. Oh, actually no, I'm going to put a function, and this function is going to be absolute value, so negative values are going to be flipped to positive values, and then I'm going to put a threshold, and this is going to be a tiny little value here, oh that's problematic, the threshold is Chuck down and analyze. Oh, there might be no slopes. That would make sense if I... Ah, yeah. Okay. There we are. Okay. And I am going to use a blur here. It's we're at a pretty low resolution, but I can blur this out. Like that. So now, we take this noise input from the threshold. And we're going to multiply these two together. And let's see if this works. So now I'm going to change the noise offset to zero. The amplitude is still going to be 0 0.5. This is basically so that when you have a, a slope calculates like it's sort of like the derivative. Um, but it, it takes like you can find rising and falling edges. So like bits where things are brighter and darker. Um, and then it tells you how much the difference between the like the slope is. It's sort of hard to confuse, uh, explain, and I sort of don't really understand it either. Um, I know how to use it, though. <laughs> um, but the problem with that is it means that brighter things will always be displaced outwards, and darker things will always di be displaced inwards. So what I need to do is run it through a noise, so it's generating like different kind of displacements, and it's just using the edges for that. So... If I run this through, I did not change the offset. So the offset needs to... Wait, no, the source midpoint needs to be zero. Okay, so now if I add... We sort of get... What I'm looking for, maybe not. Let's try that again. All right. Maybe I get rid of this blur. And I guess... I would guess that the... Harmonics are a little too... Too much. Yeah, see that's reducing it. And then we increase the period. That's interesting. Okay. But my brush seems to be doing... Oh, hang on. I need to paint on that. Okay, that works. 
just to reduce the amplitude of this. Okay, cool. Um, and then I think... So see, now we've got the opposite problem. If I change color brush here, it's all moving to the side. Change this color. Wait, why is it all moving sideways? That's not, absolutely not what I want. I mean, it's interesting. It's making interesting patterns, but it is all moving sideways. Why is that? Probably because of this noise, which I need. If I adjust that, yeah. It's gonna... All right, and this is what I really wanted, actually. So, if I have this going abs time dot seconds, we can see it's like moving all over the place. And if I draw something new, that gets joined into the chaotic movements. But I guess what I want is to move this like a lot slower. And I think I need to increase the threshold here because everything is moving. Everything, everything. And it shouldn't move if it's just black. So if I decrease this threshold, increase this threshold rather. That's working. You're getting nice variations and, and dips in between the colors too, which I think will work quite well. Why don't I add some red? No, oh, crap. Why can't I get that red? Shouldn't one of these be the red? How many of them? Oh, there's seven. This is still moving things a little too quickly. Like, what I want is really slow movements. That's cool. Alright. So, once again, let me disable this. Make this the background. That's got a nice sort of like watercolory abstract look. And it is probably mo mo moving too much. Will I share the recording of this stream? Yeah, yeah. So what I'm doing is um, mostly cutting down the streams into like highlights. Um, so my last stream, I think I streamed for like four hours and then I cut it down to like one hour. Um, so yeah, the answer is yes, there will be recordings. And also on Twitch, um, it saves for like, I think a week streams. So it'll always, the full stream will be available for a week on Twitch. All right. This 
the movements of this are too global still, but because it's, it sort of just moves everything around, which is not ideal. Um, I'm going to counteract that in a second, but let me just paint over this soon. So if I change to the cloud brush, Paint, paint the usual clouds over things. Okay. And then if I use the displace brush, um, I can add those displacements. I do sort of feel like the older form of the displace brush was cooler. but Okay. Let's get back to the the brush at hand. Which is here. Okay. So if I re enable this brush. Oh yeah, I was going to add this to the switch. Because I really want that red in. It's like the full color scheme is not being represented here. There we are. Now I can change to that. Go to increase this count to six. All right, now let's add a bit of red into this. Maybe there. It's a weird way of reacting to. Okay. So I think I want a little more like movement variation on this. So I'm going to use another displace and another noise. Also, I think I need to adjust this slightly. With a level. Um, add a tiny, tiny bit of contrast. That's better. That's not better. That's far too much contrast. Oh dear. Zero, zero, one. All right, I'm going to reset this. Okay. Going to have some of that, some of that, some of that. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and fill this up mostly. Mostly with gray, and then start adding areas of color. Because this is how I'd usually work, just trying to block out some areas of different colors. And then maybe a yeah, green to get rid of this whole gray section. Okay, and once again, far too much displacement.
Okay. That's cool. Now it's moving really slowly and mixing. Mixing the edges in. Which I like. And this is sort of like maintaining the, the same look as before, which is good too. All right, but I do think that the the movement is far too globally based, so that's what I am using this noise for. So, going to displace by this noise, and this is going to be a 32-bit float, and... Let's go half the resolution. Monochrome off. Output is going to be the noise. Actually, let's add some harmonics. So let's add a couple of harmonics and increase the period. That is far too displaced, obviously. Um, so I'm going to set that to zero. I'm going to transform this. Actually, I feel like this is too, too, too much. Oh, I wonder if the harmonic gain, if we de... All right, now I'm discovering something new. So like, this is going to be a really useful tool in shaping noise. Because when you add harmonics, you can add really subtle harmonics. Now, if we... If you increase the gain, you're going to add really dense harmonics. But if you just decrease the harmonic gain, what's the spread do? Nothing good. Forget about the spread. All right. But if we have just like really low gain harmonics, and then we transform this, Should get some like random random movement on this but like i want it to be really subtle so let's just dial that in and this is still getting far too dark i don't know what to do about that at another zero okay. <laughs> i mean this is looking cool now but it's it's too dark All right, let me just add a few, like what color have I got selected? Um, add that. Okay, that's cool. I do like that slow movement to darkness over time, but it sort of gets in the way of um, performability, and I do want to be able to actually do that. Random code generators. Oh, damn. I'm sorry I missed you following me. I've got to keep my notifications on Twitch. You're my th second follower on Twitch, so... <laughs> Thank you. If you're still watching, maybe you're not. Okay. This is working actually quite nicely. It's just the global movement is sort of annoying me. So I'm going to pull this displace in. Wait, what is it set to? Zero. Good. All right, 
So now the displace is in the feedback loop, but I haven't turned it up, so it's not it's not doing anything currently. So if I just dial this in really lightly, and that was far too much. Whoa, okay. No, no, no. I think I like the, um, the kind of look it's doing, but... So there's two ways I can decrease the amount that it is used. Um, one is on the displace, and then the other is on the noise. So I'm just going to decrease the amplitude of the noise here. Right down, real low. And I'm actually going to increase the harmonic gain. Alright, I'm going to start this again because all the colors got sort of like messed up, so. Alright, repainting everything. And then we change color. All right. So this is nice-ish. Ish. This is nice-ish, he said. It looks a lot better on the the final output than it does on the little preview version here. Probably because it's all like messed around and everything. My only issue is this is just so random and confusing that... Oh. Hey. I really don't know how to pronounce your, your name. You'll... You are Yesel. Probably butchered that horrendously, so I'm really sorry about that. But thank you for the follow on Twitch. All right. I like what's happening here. This is creating interesting things, but it's too much of a global movement. For my global movement for my liking. I'm going to think about it for a bit. Because it, it looks fine on here, really. But. It's still too washed out, I think. So. If I adjust this contrast. There uh, should be a one, yeah. If I double that. Increase the contrast like a tiny, tiny bit. Sharpening. Oh often works too. If I decrease the period on this, does this help? And this, this displace is still too strong. Or it's like not changing fast enough. Because you can see it fitting into a noise pattern eventually, which is not really what I want. I want it like... Alright, it's got too many harmonics. Harmonic gain needs to be down. Amplitude needs to be down. Because I want it to be sort of the same shape when I build it, like, sort of the same way. Okay. 
Let's try resetting this again and then starting again. Why don't we try a new color scheme this time, actually? I think we're all a bit sick of this one. All right. So. Don't really want to start with red. Yeah, start with a bit of purple. This is a good base color. Okay. Now the motion is working sort of how I want it to. So like, instead of there being a global movement that is um, being sort of brought upon by the by the slope, it's um, moving a lot slower, which is good. This displace is still doing far, far too much. Or it's maybe just like sometimes randomly goes into this whole global movement version. All right. I think I'm going to let that play for a little bit. And then... Actually, I wonder what it looks like. If we jump into the border mix brush here and we just reset, set you, reset you. That looks a lot worse. I guess another way to do this would be to have like the very edges of things being um, affected. So like do an edge detection and then a noise based on that. Maybe we could try that quickly. I feel like also um, a a performance version of this might want to also incorporate like elements of showing the behind the scenes. It might be an interesting thing for people to see. I'm loving the the details up here. Like, why don't we go full screen for a second? Ideally, I'd want more detail so it doesn't have to be so, like, um, like, currently the whole thing is really distorted, like, 
with the distortion brush. And ideally, we would have a, a version where it's, like, less distorted in the end. Um, let's see. I think there's a good, like, amount of form difference in this. Cool. Oh, we didn't lose this window this time. Usually we lose that window for some reason. I don't, I don't know why, but this time we did not. Okay, let's try this edge detection thing. Sort of like ripping apart the thing at the edges. Um, where am I? I'm in the brush. Alright. Solid paintbrush. Okay, so I feel like yeah, it's just going to have an error, isn't it? If it's not there. It's fine. What do we want? Alright, this is something that I used to do, like, a lot a long time ago. Like, when I was not so good at building feedback loops. I haven't done it in a while, actually, because I found better ways of adding details. But what I want to do is add an edge. And this just, like, detects edges. And... Let's increase the strength so you can see these edges that we've got detected around here and then add a noise output times alpha is going to be the input. Okay, so now we have a noise that is displacing is stronger along the edges. So we add another displace. And once again, set everything to zero before I put it in the feedback loop. And I did everything wrong. <laughs> I mean, it still looks sort of cool, but it's absolutely not what we want. Um, I put the wrong inputs in. All right, let me reset this feedback. And let me draw in. Maybe try and actually control what I'm drawing right now. So there's a little like background. And then if I change the color, put a bit of like, where am I? Red up here. Purple. Like a layer of purple. Getting in and then mostly this color. All right. I think that works.
Um, now let's try out this displace. So this sort of settles into a nice rhythm eventually here. Yeah, that's nice. Um, but what happens if we do... Nothing good happens if we do that. Why is it constant? Oh, all right. Uh, Got to put a transform in. And then... So now we just have the noise. We had the noise. We had everything displacing. Now we need just these little bits. Um, okay. So now it should displace just along the edges. That's not very strong. That's interesting. I feel like we want the noise more harmonics. Yeah, and then now that looks exactly like what all my old feedback loops look, used to look like. Um, I don't really like it. Maybe like a bit of that can contribute. I'm getting low frame rates from it anyway. Maybe just that much is good. Where are those, oh, those dark blues are coming from the, what I painted in. Ah, it's super nice on top there. All right. Alright, this does not need to be 4K though. Um, could even be a quarter. What are you? Half. Let's try, um, I don't know how much of these little extra bits are from what I did or like if they will naturally occur each time or if it's just from, oh, actually no, what I have to do is transform this. I mean, how's that look? That's fine. Oh, actually, you know what I need to do? Um, let's go use input, but let's put a resolution here. I assume edge detection is sort of like blur. It's, it's quite heavy. Um, let's go quarter. Oh, that adjusts the alpha to... I don't need that so strong. Maybe set that to one. One point one seven. Let's see. All right, let's try that again from the start. Reset the feedback. And what color? I like to start with that brown color, I think. Change color. There's that brown. Uh, 
at some of those highlights. I think that's just too much displacement on the edges. Yeah, it's sort of like ripping them apart a lot. I mean, it's cool, but not for this purpose. I want the... I don't know, that looks actually pretty cool, though. <laughs> uh... I guess I want it to be more controlled than that like mostly what I've got so even if I go another half I mean at, at this point it's probably just not even worth it get rid of that displace entirely alright Start again. Okay. Um, I just want to get rid of those black bits. I think that's working nicely. Maybe like the contrast between the purple and the brown doesn't work as well because it's not as like effective, effective. So maybe it'd be interesting if the brush was displaced a bit too. So right now I'm just like painting in circles, which is not very interesting or physically accurate or anything like that so if i pr pull in a noise output is the noise displace this bring down the displace amount Maybe the can increase the softness a bit too. That's good. And then Oops. Abs time dot seconds times zero. Point one, not zero comma one. Okay. Point zero two. No more than that. Oops. Zero six. That looks pretty good. 
and then we reduce the harmonic gain a little bit. All right, let's try that. This should make for... Actually, why don't we increase the... So sort of decrease the softness even more. Let's try that. Um, let me reset the feedback. Let's go. See, so you already get like. I just accidentally set the feedback of the whole thing. You're already getting like more interesting shapes. There we are. Looks quite good too, without any... Wait, did I reset the distortion? How is the distortion not reset? It should be... It shouldn't be any distortion here. That's weird. I'm going to have to set up settings too so that I can like um, really fine tune the amount that this moves because it's like moving a certain amount now. But if I set it so it's like moving a lot less so I could like paint in a landscape or something and then have it not so moving. It's quite cool though. Oh, it's distorting because I have both brushes on at once. That makes a lot of sense. All right, I'm going to just put in a bit of like cloud brush stuff to see how that looks. If I hit the... And I've just got to work out how to add like audio to this. That's nice. And then let's try distorting it a little bit more. Uh, 
I feel like my distortion brush used to be a bit more effective in its previous iteration. Now it, it distorts at a very like low scale right now. Not sure I really like it. Might want to go back to the old version. Alright, well I think I'm pretty well in full control of this now. I guess now the only thing would be maybe increasing the amount of motion that I can also control. I wonder if I turn this guy up just a little bit. I just want, yeah, those little sharper details in that guy a little bit more. Because it very gradually fades away. Cool. All right, what's next? I think what I've got to do is a little boring user interface thing where I make my brush select spit out the right ones. So, This brush select is not... Hmm. I'm going to set the count to two. Because it... That's how many options there are. Then my kind of idea is to have just like one... One object that is creating the switches for each of the brushes. So each brush I want to have just an on-off switch. Well, that one doesn't have one yet, but border mix brush, it just has an on-off switch. Um, currently controlled in a sort of janky way, but let me just build it and I'll show you what I mean. Where's collapse? All right. Brush switches. Okay. So I just need some limits. I basically just need a math and a limit for each one. So, oh, actually. Maybe I can just use logics. So I'm going to put in a select. I don't really need this null. We're going to select our brush select. So this just selects which brush we're using. And then So we're going to go off when outside bounds. This is going to be, 0 to 1 is going to be the first brush. 1. Uh, 0 to 0 0.9. 1 to 1.9. And then 1, uh, 2 to 2.9 to 2.9. Well, it could be 2.6. It doesn't really matter. All right, so now if I hit the brush select button, we have each one cloud brush. Cool. 
All right, so let's. Put a null. Actually, not a null, a merge. Then an out. It'd be really good if I could keep updating this. Uh, well, I mean, it's not that hard to update. Okay. So, Cloud Brush. New plan. Solid Paintbrush is going to be our third one. I haven't customized it yet. Wait. Customize component. On. There we are. Border mix brush. It's going to be two. Awesome. I don't like these soft edges. Might have to find some way of making sure head edges are always hard or something. You know what else I want to do? I want to have this. Keyboard in. I'm going to use key five. Key five to switch between. Uh, color schemes. And it's going to go through a filter because I want it to, I don't want it to switch immediately. I want it to switch slowly. And I'm going to say maybe five seconds. And I'm going to change it to a box filter. So box is just a straight diagonal filter. So it's going to like change on that. Oh, actually, actually it doesn't matter, but Loop min max zero to one. See there, change color scheme. It's far too slow. Two. Okay. And the one last thing we need to do is jump into our UI and update it so we can say, this is the brush I'm using. And that brush is going to be I'm going to update it in here. Add row. This is going to be solid color brush okay let's try putting it all together sort of like a a performance thing just check on how twitch is going yeah twitch is going all right let's jump in here And use my little UI here. Make that a bit bigger. Okay. So. If I hit two, it should reset everything. And then we will start from just a solid color brush and build up from there. And it doesn't reset everything. It resets just to the solid color brush. Okay. Let's jump in here. Um, Where's that green coming from? 
Why is that green? It's disturbing. Keyboard in key two. And you. Okay. So here we go. Full performance. Solid color brush. Not painting any colors. Why is my solid? Oh, I've turned it off previously. Oh, we've got to hook this up. Yeah. Now it's hooked up. All right. And then we add another color. And another color. All right, and then let's change brush to the, the cloud brush. And add some little clouds in. That is definitely not the cloud brush. That is the displace brush. Is this a cloud brush? Very strange. Oh well. I want the... Well, this is a cloud brush. It says it's the micro displace brush, but it really isn't. It doesn't know what it's talking about. Okay, that's looking nicely. I guess I w would also want an eraser. Oh yeah, why wasn't there teal? There should have been teal in the solid colors. I want to add some solid teal, wait. Solid color. Just add some gray behind there, but... Should be able to... add teal. There's the teal. Yeah. That's good. All right, now let me change color schemes. And keep adding. Going back to the old one. Um, let me adjust the brush again. Add displacement. And then Let's go back to the solid color brush and then add some solid color. It's 
working pretty nicely. I think this brown background looks a little better. Dark and things. Interesting. All right. Let's watch that in full screen for a little bit. It's not perfect, but... I can add a whole lot of purple. I think I do like the background of that. I think the main issue with the background is you can really see the um, the little waves that the slope produces, which maybe doesn't look as good. Producing some little good details here and there, though. All right. Well, it's been three hours. I think I'm going to leave it there for today. Um, I worked on this one last time, too, so maybe I'll give it a rest for a bit. Um, work on some other one tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, I'll probably stream next on Friday. And it'll actually probably be a music stream with the modular synth. So... Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Um, thanks to the new followers. Um, I think I got two new followers on Twitch. So welcome, guys. And I don't know how many followers on YouTube because it doesn't tell me that. But yeah, thank you, everyone who tuned in. I'll be back here next Friday. And then I'm trying to do every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And next time we do visuals, I'll probably work on something a little different than this because we've had a lot of, a lot, a lot of cloudy action. Um, maybe we go for some like glitch paint or some like fully glitchy stuff, or maybe we jump in Houdini and work on some 3D stuff. But until then, uh, goodbye. Thanks for tuning in. I love you all.